speed and acceleration. Speed is a concept we are all familiar with, and it's one that's easy to understand. Basically, the faster you're going, the further you'll travel in the same amount of time. So let's look at a car traveling to Manchester. We can see how far the car is traveling as the number of miles to Manchester decreases on the signs. So it was 120 miles to Manchester at 2 p.m. And we can see that as the time moves on, the distance slowly decreases until the car arrives in Manchester at 4 p.m. So what was the average speed of the car during this journey? Well, in cars, we tend to give speeds in miles per hour, which literally tells you how many miles you will go in one hour. So the car traveled 120 miles in two hours. How many miles per hour? It should be obvious that if they traveled 120 miles in two hours, then they would have traveled 60 miles in one hour. So the speed of 60 miles per hour. And that's as easy as finding speed is. In fact, we have an equation for speed, and it is the distance traveled divided by the time taken. In physics, the way they make this more tricky is by using different units. So rather than miles per hour, physics like to use the unit of meters per second. The idea is the same, though. It's just how many meters you would travel in one second. So a car traveled 400 meters in 10 seconds. Its speed would be 400 meters divided by 10 seconds which equals 40 meters per second. Also, you may sometimes hear speed being referred to as velocity. They're essentially the same thing, but velocity has a direction as well as a size. So we could say that going from left to right across the screen is a positive velocity, but going from right to left across the screen, the exact opposite direction is a negative velocity. Let's look at one more example for speed. This time I have a car that's traveling at 20 meters per second and I want to know how far I will travel in five minutes. Well, I know that speed is distance divided by time. So if I rearrange this equation, I get that distance equals speed times time. So I have a speed in meters per second, but now I've got a time in minutes. I need to convert my time into seconds. So five minutes times 60 seconds gives me 300 seconds. Now I can put my values in and find that the distance equals 20 meters per second times 300 seconds, which is 6,000 meters or six kilometers. Now acceleration is a concept that's closely linked to velocity and is one that again you should be familiar with. Acceleration is just how much your velocity increases every second. So let's look at a car. It starts at zero meters per second. And within six seconds, it's traveling at 30 meters a second. So how much did the car's speed increase by each second? What is its acceleration? Well, the equation for acceleration is change in speed divided by time taken. So the change in the speed here has gone from 0 to 30. So the change is 30 meters per second. And the time taken is six seconds. So we see that the velocity increases by 30 divided by 6, or 5 meters per second per second, or 5 meters per second squared, which is the unit we like to use for acceleration. Again, let's look at another example. This time I know that the car's acceleration is 2 meters per second. So how long will it take to go from rest to 20 meters per second? So let's look at our equation. Acceleration equals change in speed divided by time taken. So I need to rearrange the equation for time, which gives me time taken equals change in speed divided by acceleration. So in go my values. I find that I get 20 meters per second divided by 2 meters per second squared, which gives me 10 seconds. Now, as with any questions that involve calculations, make sure you learn the equations and make sure you practice lots of questions to get used to the concepts.